In a world where content is king and going viral is the ultimate goal, one man has cracked the code to success. Meet Logan Forsyth, the founder and co-CEO of Mediascaling.com, a visionary in the world of content creation generating over 2.1 billion views, with over $1 million in revenue in the agency's first year. Hi, I'm Natasha from Submagic, the ultimate short form editing tool, and today we're going to be breaking down Logan Forsyth's steps to success, which allows him to guarantee up to 150 million views in the first 90 days of working with his clients. And you're probably thinking that's crazy, right? But with results like that, it's understandable why he's been able to scale his agency so quickly. So if you're a marketing agency owner and you're looking to scale up and fast, then keep watching. This is our first year in business. We started in February of 2023 and we're projected to make a little bit over a million. You heard that right, a million in the first year of starting his agency. So this guy really knows what he's talking about and we're gonna be sharing all his key points of success with you in this video. So we work with large creators, personal brands, very proven editing styles. And when you're doing that level of volume with great quality content and people who have already proven to go viral and have some level of brand recognition and just face recognition, a lot of posts go viral. So Logan works with people that are already well established online, have great performing content that is proven to do well already and recognize faces in that industry. But we also work with another mix of clients who want to be more involved with the process more than 120,000 times easily across social media. Logan just said him and his team have posted over 120,000 times across social media. So with that kind of volume, he's seen what patterns work and what don't. Like, So say I sign up, how many accounts are you creating? We usually create between 20 and 40, depending on what level okay. of volume we start with. To use you as an example, the accounts would be like, uh, let's say Brett Malinowski clips, Brett Malinowski reels, uh, best of Brett Malinowski. So what Logan's describing here is that he creates batches as he refers to them, which is one title for a set of accounts that'll go across Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, YouTube, and TikTok. He chooses these five platforms because they're the best platforms for short form video. And then that allows us to do the volume that we do. By having 20 to 40 batches of accounts for each of his clients, it allows them to test and trial multiple different editing styles and increase that posting volume, meaning more opportunity for success and virality. So we're always just like testing around and we start with somewhere between 20 to 40 accounts. But from there, we look at the data and then we could end up. So here, what Logan's talking about is analyzing the data once he's been posting for a little while from these various accounts and batches. This is a key point to think about. Whatever volume of posting you're doing and to whatever channel, regularly review the insights of each of these channels to see what's performing well and the adjustments you can make to to enhance your strategy. To on each account, is it all just a mixed bag? Like, are you blending them all together? Because you said reaction videos do well. So is there one account that's like Brett Malinowski reacts or is it just sprinkling in the same content across all these accounts, but they're slightly edited differently? Yeah, great question. So a big need that we feel as well is we find, especially long form creators, they generate a fraction of the reach they could be from their content because they're just not posting enough of it. So this is how Logan's content strategy works. He takes a creator's pre-existing high-performing long form content. So this is something like a podcast or a YouTube video. With that long form content, he then highlights the best bits and cuts the video down into several short form video snippets. The types of content he uses might be keynote talks, vlogs, podcasts, and he really truly believes in reaction videos. Reaction videos do really well because if a creator is reacting to a viral video, the reaction video already has a way better chance at going viral because there's already a viral video attached to it. People are already interested in that particular viral video, so just creating a a reaction video leveraging the viral video is way more likely to go viral than reacting to a completely random video that hasn't gained much traction or success yet. So essentially he's leveraging pre-existing content that's already been shown to perform well. Let's say Brett Malinowski clips uh, will have that username across Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube. So it's not like mm. the same content being posted across five different accounts on the same platform like Instagram. Uh, and it also looks like different people are managing all the different accounts. So when Logan refers to his batches, what he actually does is creates a unique look and feel for each batch. A sense of brand identity that makes the batch look individual and like a real user account. He's able to create this unique look and feel by changing editing styles, fonts, mixing up the type of content that they share, changing the audios, the b-rolls, essentially any visual element that will alter the look and feel of the account and the video styles. The reason why high volume content works so well is because each individual channel will be ranking 
for that one particular creator. Therefore, the creator's gaining tons of exposure across the five different channels. So reaction videos, you can really still tailor this to brand yourself and add a lot of value, whether it's entertainment value or educational value, uh, but you just react to a piece of a video and then you let that video play for let's say the first 15, 30, 45 seconds, and then you just give your take on it. And why this works so well is because you can also take it to the next level and find content that's already gone viral that you react to. And if a piece of content's already gone viral once, the likelihood of it happening again is much higher versus just like finding this random video that's gotten two views. Agency owners, get your clients reacting to viral videos within their niche. This allows your clients to leverage high performing videos that have already gained some traction and success. Then you can go ahead and hop off the back of that video and share your take on it. With your clients all having 300K subscribers or more, having revenue and willing to do this at scale, how, how long does it take to get your first 10,000 followers on a platform? Another Another really great point here that Logan talks about is the fact that he qualifies each of his clients before he even starts working with them. For you agency owners out there, this is something that you should already be doing and definitely think about if you're not doing it already. It allows you to understand your clients wants, needs and pain points a little bit more rather than you taking on the client for a quick cash grab and not really delivering the results that they want. By implementing a client qualifier system, you'll see more success in the projects that you do take on, which will allow your agency to scale quicker and faster over time, improving your client retention. More often than not, it just like consistently goes viral. So now when you find those winning pieces of content, you have an asset for your brand to where you know there's good chances that each time you post it, it's going to go viral again. It's going to expose you to new people and help grow your audience faster. So the more of those like winning clips that we find, it just helps snowball this even faster. So what Logan's saying here is once you do have a content piece that is performing really well, save it and acknowledge that this one performs better than the others. You can then use that to your advantage and post that individual piece of content several times over and over just by remixing the content. It's super important to remix the content so that one, the content doesn't fatigue and two, your content will be shown to wider audiences. You can remix the content simply by changing a couple visual elements, the audios, the hook, the b-roll and the editing style. You can also mix and match the clips, put them in a different order and that would be considered remixing the video also. Remix is like, we'll use the same exact raw clip and uh, really just like add a different editing style to it, like different fonts, different overlays, or like a different B-roll for the hook. We'll remix it with the editing itself, but the actual clip is the same clip. One of the satisfying clips or a gameplay clip or whatever else on the bottom half and then have the piece of content on the top half. So I'm sure we've all seen these viral videos on TikTok and Logan mentioned it works for his clients too, which means it will likely work for yours. Think about splitting the screen, having your client talking on the top part or a piece of their high performing content, and then a satisfying or screenplay style video on the bottom half. This is called a split screen video and it tends to gain a lot of views and attention because the lower part of the screen stops people from scrolling and then at the top you have your creator clips. So, so talking about like finding winning content, like it, it's Bob. If you guys want to go search Greg O'Gallagher, his uh, also Kino body, you'll find like he just, he goes hard and punches Bob. Again, what Logan's talking about here is if a specific style of content seems to outperform your client's other content, do more of that. See how you can ultimately create the same content just in different ways, different backgrounds, different locations, different topics, but the same structure of the video. What have you seen that these people have in common? common that makes their short form just work. It's understanding psychology and uh, what captures attention to a large degree. The hook, which is the first three seconds of a video is the most important part of the entire video. You have to have a statement or be saying something, pose a question, whatever it is, that's gonna hook people into wanting to watch the rest of the content. This is so important, guys. Hooks, hooks, hooks. The first three seconds of your video determine whether it's gonna go viral or not. This is why both audio and visual hooks are so important. There are a bunch of resources online about hooks, but we can definitely create a video around hooks. So if you think that would be interesting and helpful, for your marketing agency, then leave hooks in the comments below. On Submagic, we make this even easier for you with our feature hook 
titles. By clicking on hook titles, AI will automatically generate high performing hooks unique to your content. And this will stop people from scrolling past your video, increasing your views and traction on that particular video. We've seen just data shows overall higher production value helps content perform better. We just are no longer in the landscape, at least today, maybe the pendulum swings back, but probably not going to go viral if you're just like doing selfie videos on your iPhone versus having a setup like this, having high production, good equipment, all that stuff helps. What Logan's talking about here is really important. There are so many content creators out there. Everyone's trying to gain views and virality. So what's going to make you stand out above the rest? Good lighting, great audio, high quality cameras, and they don't have to be super expensive, but just a high quality iPhone or smartphone will do the trick. But you really want to think about the quality of the content that you're producing. If your sound is muffled or the lighting's not too great, people are likely going to scroll past that video. So you want to avoid that by enhancing your setup. Um, and then there is a degree as well of just putting in the reps to put themselves in better chances of going viral is by studying content that's already gone viral. So Logan touches on doing the right research, analyzing the data and educating yourself on what makes best performing content. He talks about his ongoing education that he's invested in himself. And this isn't the conventional form of education like college degrees or universities. What he means is learning from people that are already performing at a really high capacity. Seeing what works for them and how you can implement that in your own business will propel you into generating that kind of success much faster than if you try and figure it out and learn by yourself along the way. And these resources are there, so use them guys. Being genuine and authentic, like you have to be yourself. And the more that that shines, the, the more people can pick up on that. Logan's talking a little bit about authenticity here, which is so important. With so many amazing creators out there, there's no good just copying what someone else has done. So as much as you may learn their techniques and get to understand how they achieve their success, make your content your own. You are your own superpower, so use your own style and characteristics to your advantage. And it's consistency. So many people, they'll post like once a week or every three days or whatever, like post daily. When it comes to short form content, post daily. Another really valuable tip here is posting consistently. For short form content, Logan recommends posting at least once a day. If you can up that to two or three times a day, you're going to be able to scale your strategy much faster. But there's no good posting three times a day one week and then the following week not posting hardly at all. The algorithms will support you better if you're more consistent. So start by posting once a day. Once you've got that down, then you can increase your posting volume. For long form content, Logan mentions posting at least once per week. Form content, post at least once a week. And again, you have to look at it as like every single time that you post on any social media platform, it's another at bat to go viral. That's a really great point to refer to is that every single time you post, it's an opportunity to go viral. So essentially, the more you're posting, the higher your chances are at going viral. Providing your posting quality content. What's your science to the thumbnail? So we actually have thumbnail templates that we use on our Instagram post um, because it allows us to you know, control what people are seeing for the thumbnail. And we'll add a headline on there as well. And the headline can, like that copy, if you're using proven frameworks, can drive more clicks. Another really, really great point here guys is being specific about your thumbnails. Most platforms will give you the option to select your thumbnail and this is for a reason guys. You can upload your own image or pick a specific scene from the video which will help you generate more clicks and more views on that particular video rather than a thumbnail automated by the app where your face is doing something a little crazy or the scene isn't too specific. People don't really know what the content's about so they're unlikely to click on it. So yes thumbnails do matter and be specific in the thumbnails that you choose. $100 million offers by Alex Hermosi, incredible. It has helped us really shape our offer. Mm -hmm. The guarantee has been huge for us. Like we wanted to come in with a guarantee that no one else has even close to a level of. And uh, that is our up to 150 million views in 90 days guarantee. We do a two call close process for the sell side. I've tested multiple times. So Logan talks a little bit here about the positioning as a marketing agency and how he's able to attract those premium clients that really see the value in what his offer is. And the first point of call for that is how you're actually gonna position this offer 
with the maximum amount of value and success attached to it. His 150 million views in 90 day guarantee is a really, really strong selling point because it simplifies the sales process for the client. When they get in touch with mediascaling.com, they already have an understanding that by the end of 90 days, that's gonna be the result. So you wanna be focusing on selling the result and not the service. He also mentions a two-step closing process. The first call is around a 15 minute call where you're gonna learn more about the client, what their needs are, their pain points, and the results that they're looking to get out of the collaboration. And this will allow you to gain a really good understanding of where the client's at and where you need to meet them. The second call is a little bit longer between 45 to 60 minutes, where you're gonna go back to the client with a best boat strategy. Of course, this strategy ultimately works and is tried and tested with your other clients, but you want to make the client feel like you've understood their unique pain points and you have a solution to them. And this is gonna put you in a position of expertise and power, and ultimately it'll make the whole closing process a lot easier. So with that, it pretty much concludes where we're at with this video. We've touched on posting volume batches, remixing content, repurposing long form into short form, different content styles that work. I most definitely learned something in this video and I hope you guys did too. For more content on how you can scale your marketing agency and fast and the best practices for short form video, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel. I'm Natasha from Submagic. Thanks so much for watching this video with me guys. And I will be back with some new and exciting content very soon. Bye.